Hey everyone, this is Katie and Adam for The Knot Project. Our friends Jen and Craig, who do The Knot Project, invited us to um, be here for Valentine's Week. Yay! We're excited. <laughs> do you feel the love? Um, we're going to be guest posting on Valentine's Day, but a couple it's a couple days before Valentine's Day right now. And we want to talk a little bit about unrealistic expectations. We all have them. We all have them. <laughs> yes. And I think sometimes in marriage, we expect each other to read each other's minds. Perhaps that's got me in trouble a time or two. So um, we just want to tell a quick story about an unrealistic expectation that happened right after we were married. We got married in June of 2001. And this was September after that. And I was getting ready to turn 25. And birthdays are... Big birthday. Big birthday. Bir that seems... <laughs> now I'm 40. So that <laughs> doesn't seem like that big seems of a deal. So long, it yeah. was a big deal then. And I'm a little older than Adam. So I had... I'm like, ooh, what's he going to get me? Because I'm a gift gal. And I like things right on the day. So like, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. How many of you like to celebrate on the day you know i actually don't know <laughs> because it's so crowded on valentine's it's day it's crazy on valentine's day but what happened was poor guy never it's not really his it, we, not, it is okay well but we've grown we have grown we we know each other and know each other's expectations much yes. more now so and also i've a realized mistake i will Hopefully, never make again. Well, and I've realized too, like it's not fair for me to just think, even though you know when you're married, you're one, you're one. <laughs> that doesn't always mean you can read the other person's mind. And so I've come <clears throat> to be able to um, communicate some expectations, and sometimes they are unrealistic. Like if I want to go to Hawaii for Valentine's Day, probably not realistic. Not gonna happen. <laughs> not this Valentine's Day, anyways. <laughs> so maybe. In 25 more years, hopefully, maybe. Hopefully before then. So what happened on my 25th birthday is the day came and went and there wasn't a gift. And he had started thinking about a gift. But like to me, like my family culture, my upbringing was like, you just would never do that. Now his family culture is, you know, if you said happy birthday to each other, great. You might get a car, you know, like, so we were coming. If it happened, if something happened within the week of your birthday, you're good. Right. So we were just coming at it from different angles. And my dad would like get um, all of us girls like flowers and balloons and chocolate on Valentine's Day. Like we could count on that. You know what I mean? Thanks a lot. So, this is so, what I have so to. So thanks to your father-in-law, right? This is what I have to follow. <laughs> so anyway, um, so it gets a little. Not that that's a, a bad expectation. That's a great thing. Right. But. I, it, we, just, we just came from different cultures and. Family cultures. I didn't. Yeah realize that that was a expectation so it gets a little worse before it gets better so his brother it gets better maybe his <laughs> brother um has a birthday the day after mine so i think the next day or something we were at his parents house and adam comes out with this big gift and he brings it over to me like it's gonna he's gonna give it to me and here I'm like, oh, he got something. Oh, it's big too. What is it? And he's like, oh, just kidding. It's for my brother. He had no idea. Like, I mean, he had no idea what. <laughs> that, I mean, I was just like, what? I know this guy loves Everybody's me. Everybody's probably thinking, how could he have no idea? This must be the dumbest man in the planet. No, he's not. It's just <laughs> an example of my expectations were just like, you know, really high. And he was trying to be loving. Like he was trying to think about what I wanted. It was just going to come at a later date. And so we just encourage you guys to communicate because <clears throat> you don't always know. And sometimes you can meet expectations if you know what they are. But, um, so that's something that we've learned. I feel like you need we, to tell a bad story we, about me. Now. <laughs> there's no bad stories about you. Oh, there is. We, uh, but not only, uh, expressing, um, uh, expectations, uh, because I always say, if I know the expectation, I can meet it and quite possibly exceed those expectations. But if I don't know what they are, then it's hard for, it's hard for uh, me to meet those expectations. 
and that goes for both of us. You know, if 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 she doesn't know that I have an expectation, then uh, then she can't meet it. She doesn't know that it's a it's a need and it's something that is expected. So <clears throat> that makes it very difficult. And really, we're only setting each other up for failure. Right. I think something that goes along with that too, just with Valentine's Day coming up, like it's okay if you're a Valentine's fan. I think the worst thing is when you pretend you're not and, and you you're setting up something. your spouse for failure, Yeah, you know, because sometimes you feel bad like, oh, I know our budget might not allow it or whatnot. But you know, one of the greatest gifts, I'm going to redeem this guy that just got thrown under the bus. One of the greatest gifts he ever gave me was he picked up two white rocks. We lived out in Arizona and he brought them home and he said, I got you something. I think you got me like a candy bar maybe too, but you said these two rocks stood out from all the others like you do. And so he gave this to me. And I tell you what, besides the rock <laughs> that I got way back, no, those rocks meant so much to me because he was thinking about me. It didn't cost him anything except a little, like a couple seconds of time. And he presented them well, so it doesn't, to meet expectations, sometimes it's not, you have to go, you know, send your wife to Hawaii, take your wife to Hawaii. Don't just, don't just send <laughs> don't her. Don't just send her. Go with her. That's a good but the thing. other thing about expectations is it's really vulnerable when you communicate expectations. And so I think if you go to your spouse, whether you're the husband or the wife, and you communicate expectations, give your spouse room to say if that's reasonable if they're able to meet those but if you are like if like if um I said you know honey it's been a really long time since you got me a gift and that's my love language that'd be really great I mean that's vulnerable for me to say that so if he's like oh I'm gonna get you a gift soon and then he doesn't do it like that Not really good. stinks or the other way like if he said because because what happens then is then is then she starts not expressing her expectations or her needs and shuts down and then uh and 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 there's bitterness and resentment there that grows and that's not a good thing that that's right allowing the enemy to drive a wedge between and we're not trusting us, so. each other and i think the same thing goes if he said you know honey i know you're really busy but if you could maybe like fold that laundry or have the kids help you. And he does fold laundry too. But you know, that's kind of taking over the house like this week, that would be great. And then if I forget that or just decide not to do that, like that stinks because he's made himself vulnerable and it probably wasn't something he wanted to necessarily say. So the key with unmet expectations is to communicate, to also be reasonable. You know, if someone, if your spouse has a crazy week, it might not be reasonable that you can go on a date night that week, but you know, you want to still get one on the calendar. So